Good morning, saints. I greet you once again in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the triune head of God, but yet under one control, and that's God himself. I will bless the Lord at all times. Every time I think about how good the Lord has been to me, I have to bless his name and glorify his name and tell him thank you once again, Lord, for life, health, and strength. Thank you for a sound mind, for waking me up this morning and clothing me in my right mind. Sometimes it's the little things, have mercy, Lord, that we bless his name for. And I thank him for each of you this morning for taking the time to come and see what the Lord has to say in his word. I can assure you that there's a blessing in the word of God. And I, I know that some of you may not have be feeling the very best and uh, other little ins and odds that uh, may be plaguing you. But uh, listen, when you turn it over to God, he said to bring all of our cares unto him. For he cares for us. So this morning, whatever it is that it might be just plaguing you as a nuisance, give it to God. Take it to him. He will take care of it. And I trust that he has provided and supplied everything that you needed in your household this past week. Right up until this very moment. We give him glory and honor for who he is for what he has done and what he's doing, even as we speak. And I hope you came with some expectation and some anticipation this morning, looking for something from the Lord, because whatever the Lord, uh, whatever we need, the Lord has it, and it's right there in his words. All we have to do is line up with the word, and the work is already done. Let us pray. Oh, eternal God, here we are once again. And we, we present ourselves as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto you for your use and for your purpose. Lord, we come to lift your name up this morning, regardless of what going on in our lives or how we may feel. Lord, we come to lift up your name. For you said, if I be lifted up, then I will draw all men unto myself. Lord, we thank you now. Thank you for your strength. Thank you for your power. And Father, we ask that uh, you would uh, continue to uh, open up doors for us and, and give us the, the things that we need. Go ahead of us in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we just count it all joy, all joy once again to have this opportunity, God, to be in your midst. God, keep us this hour, we pray, and it is in Christ Jesus' name, amen, amen. Again, I'm just delighted to be coming to you uh, in this particular format uh, again uh, with this telecast. Uh, uh, the Lord has always provided a way. All we have to do is have faith and walk in that faith. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Have mercy, Lord. There is a word that comes from the Lord today, and it will be coming out of the book of 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10, you will find these words. As every man hath received the gift, even so minister the same one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Verse 11, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth, that God 
in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. I thank the Holy Spirit once again who has provided me with a theme or a topic to go along with the folk of verses uh, this morning that will hopefully give them a little bit more clarity, a little bit more understanding uh, that as the seed go out, and you hear me say that every Sunday morning, because the seed is very powerful. It is the word of God. And as it goes out, uh, that it will find a place in our spirits, in our hearts, and, and that we will allow that seed to manifest itself. And in that manifestation, that our lives be transformed right before our eyes and that we all may be able to live a life that may be pleasing unto the Lord for the rest of our lives. So for just a few moments this morning, I want to speak with you on this subject, gifted to serve. Have mercy, Lord. Gifted to serve. Now, when we think about this, we reflect back to the book of Ecclesiastes 3 and 1, where it tells us for everything under the sun, there is a reason and what and a purpose. We were not just created to be created. We were not created to just occupy space and time. We all have a purpose in this world. And we have not gone before the Lord to, to ask, what is our purpose? Or what are my talents? Or what is my gift? James says, if any man like wisdom, if you desire to know those things about yourself, ask God. He will let you know what those elements are. Gifted to serve. And as we look at this passage of scripture, the Bible clearly states that every believer receives a spiritual gift. Every believer now, some people nevertheless think that they were overlooked, but we know that that's not true based on the word of God. In the book of John 3.16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whomsoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So God gave his Son to the world. If you are in the world, he gave his Son for you also. So you are are not overlooked. The Bible also tells us that it is God's desire that no soul to be lost. So God has given you his son. And if you decide to reject that, then in your heart, in your mind, then you are overlooked. But it's not God. It's you. Now, so uh, these individuals, they meander through life refusing opportunity to ask the Lord Jesus Christ to come into their lives and be their Lord and their master and to serve the body of Christ. But listen, the opportunity is there. You got up this morning. You were clothed in your right mind. The opportunity is there. How mercy, Lord. And other folk are so busy uh, wishing they had a different ability and, and they are not using the one bestowed unto them by the Holy Spirit. How much the Lord. In this kind of attitude, it hinders the body of Christ. The body of Christ. And we must understand that God has a specific purpose and ministry for every Christian, gifted to serve every Christian. How much the Lord and our spiritual gifts help us to fulfill his plan, his purpose in our lives. 
Now we learned which one are ones we possess by getting involved in the life of the church. When you get involved in the life of the church, those talents, those uh, those gifts are, are, are coming out at that particular time. You'll find out what particular area that, that you excel in. But you got to first get in the church. Remember, gifted to serve. Gifted to serve. And you see, a believer will know their divinely appointed abilities when they begin to exercise them. And the best way to exercise them is in the church. Oh, you can exercise them otherwise, but the best place to do it is to end the church. Now, let us understand the Lord has a purpose in mind when he bestowed spiritual gifts upon his children. And Christians are to exercise their specific skills for the common good. That's for everybody, the common good. It's for everyone. The Bible teaches us to pray ye what? One for another. To look out what? One for another. And everyone profits when, when the believer do God's work uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Guess what? Everyone profits. Everybody. Have mercy, Lord. In the book of 1 Corinthians 12 and 7. 1 Corinthians 12 and 7, you will find these words. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit whether. Now, when we look at this particular passage of Scripture, Paul tells us, he says, no matter what the gift, what the ministry, what uh, our effort. He says all spiritual gifts come from the Holy Spirit, from the Holy Spirit, and they function properly and effectively and make him, the Lord Jesus Christ, make him known, make him understood and evident in the church, not only in the church, but in the the world by spiritually profiting all who receive their ministry. We are responsible for the light that God has given unto us. We are to let that light so shine that the world, the world may see the good works. Remember, we are gifted to serve. Have mercy, Lord. Now, these gifts are used in a variety of ways, including to equip, to edify, to encourage one another. How merciful, Lord. Again, we are to encourage one another. We are to pray one for the other. That's our responsibility as Christians for the part of the body of Christ. In the book of Ephesians, Ephesians 4 and 12, 4 and 12, you will find these words. For the perfecting of the saints, of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Now, when we look at this particular context of Scripture, it tells us that God has given the church an enormous responsibility. And that responsibility is to make disciples of every one. Remember here again, we are gifted to serve. And this involves preaching, it involves teaching and healing and nurturing and giving and administering and many other tasks that the Holy Spirit brings. And if we had to fulfill this command as individuals, it would be impossible. And it would be impossible because we wouldn't have the source, we wouldn't have the power, we wouldn't have the strength, we wouldn't have the know-how. 
The Bible says without him, we can do nothing. So it is in him, by him, and through him. Remember, we are gifted to serve. Have mercy, Lord. Can't say it enough. But God calls us as members of his body. And some of us can do one task and some can do what another task. But, but, but here is the power when we all come together. The Bible says where there are two or three touching in agreement, that's the power. There he is in the midst of all of that. And guess what? God gets the glory. But we are gifted to serve. Have mercy, Lord. And don't ever forget that. We're gifted to serve. It doesn't belong to us. It, it comes from God. Have mercy, Lord. Now to appreciate how various gifts work to build up the body of Christ, we may have to broaden our understanding uh, of the words like evangelist and prophet and and teacher and and, and the reason that we may have to uh, broaden uh, our knowledge on that is because biblically speaking these terms describes co-laborers who share Christ they are co-laborers they are spiritual mentors in the body of Christ and they're there to explain the biblical truth to the believers who may be discouraged or downtrodden or, or dismayed. We are there to give them the word of the Lord. Remember again, we are gifted to serve. It's not our gift. It's not our talent. It's not our style. It belongs to God. And it's a gift. And we are gifted to serve. Have mercy, Lord. And we need to understand that every member of the Christian fellowship is important. Every member. And each one of us has a different task to do. God, we thank you this morning. And let us also remember where God has gifted us and opened doors of opportunity for ministry. He the Lord Jesus himself, he also provides the strength, the courage to exercise our ability. He gives us the strength to do it when he opens the door. Have mercy, Lord. In the book of 2 Timothy, excuse me, 2 Timothy 3 verses 16 and 17, you will find these words. It says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctoring, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Verse 17, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. All good works. And when you look at this particular passage of Scripture, it teaches us that the Bible is not a collection of stories or fables or myth or, or merely human uh, ideas about God. It is much greater than that. It is not just a human book. It's greater than that. You see, through the Holy Spirit, God revealed his person as to who he is and planned. He planned this uh, to godly men. He gave this to godly men who wrote down God's message for his people. That's the gift. And we are gifted to serve. And this process is known as inspiration. These are the inspired words of God. And guess what? God, God gives us the gift to inspire others through the word of God. This is what happened when he inspired the mind of the prophets to write it. 
have mercy, Lord. Now, the writers wrote from their own personal experiences, their, their own historical backgrounds and their, and their cultural texts. But, but now, here, here's the catch. But even though they used their own minds and their talents and their language and their style, they wrote what God wanted them to write. And the same thing with us. God uses our talents and our language and our styles and our minds, but the power comes from God. We don't have the strength or the knowledge or the power to generate anything, but God uses what we have to his glory. We are gifted to serve. It's not your gift. It's not your talent. Have mercy, Lord. It belongs to God. And let us understand in the book of Psalms 118 and 8, it tells us that it is better to trust in the Lord than to put our confidence in man. So let us understand the scriptures is completely trustworthy. You can trust the word of God. You can trust the promises of God. Have mercy, Lord. And the reason is because God was, is, and yet will be in control of everything. Everything. The writing, the, his words, they are entirely authoritative and they are there for our faith and for our lives. I challenge each of you this morning to allow the word of God apply it to your life. Your life will never, ever be the same. Have mercy, Lord. And we're closing. The whole Bible is God's inspired word. The whole Bible, because it is inspired and trustworthy, we should read it and apply it to our lives. Don't try sometimes to understand it. Just do what it says. Gifted. Gifted to serve. The Bible is our standard for testing everything else that claims to be true. If you think your life is all of that, measure it by the word of God. Have mercy, Lord. It is our source of guidance for how we should live. You can't live like you want to live and be a part of the body of Christ. Christ has morals. There are guidelines that we must adhere to. Have mercy, Lord. It is our only source Listen to me, our only source, there is no other source. It is our only source of knowledge about how we can be saved. Our only source. Have mercy, Lord. Gifted to serve. I challenge each of you this morning, each of you, have mercy, Lord. If you don't know what your talent or your gift is, go to the Lord Jesus Christ and ask. And, and ask with a sincere heart. God will reveal to you your talent, your gift. And when you find out what it is, put it to work in the church of God, in the body of Christ. Have mercy, Lord. Your life will never, ever, ever be the same. The doors of the church are now open. You may come just as you are. This is a good way to find out what your talents are, what your gifts are. Just come as you are. Have mercy, Lord. Just give yourself to the Lord in a humble, in a meek way. God will take what you give to him and he will mold it and shape it to his purpose. And you will quickly find out 
what your gifts are, what your talents are. And when you do, remember, it doesn't belong to you. It belongs to God. And he just granted you that for service. Have mercy, Lord. And if you have any questions or, or, or any comments, any desire, by all means, just give me a call. Again, I will be delighted to sit with each of you. 850-893-7085. Let us pray. Oh, eternal God, here we are once again. And we are just so grateful, Lord, for the way you have handled this portion of this service. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to come boldly to the throne of grace. And Lord, you told us to bring all of our cares unto you. And Lord, today we want to know what our gifts are, what our talents are, God. Because we desire to serve you, Lord, to the day, to the day we die, God. Because the Bible teaches us it's unto you that we live, we breathe, and we move. And it's in you, God, that we shall die. So, Lord, it is our desire right now to serve you, Lord. And we thank you for the way you have kept us right up until this very moment, God. But, Lord, we want to know more about you, Lord. More about how we can edify you, how we can lift and magnify and glorify your name, how we can serve you and your people more, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, grant us, grant us the answer to this prayer in the name of Jesus, Lord. And we thank you for the way you have kept us. We thank you for the way you have provided for us right now. And Lord, we ask a blessing for our neighbor and our neighbor's children. There are people all over the world today, Lord, who are hungry. There are people all over the world today, Lord, that don't have a place to stay. They don't have a place where there is shelter, God, where there is warmth. In the name of Jesus, God, open up a door. Open up the minds of your people, God. And Lord, give us the provision to provide. We have the desire, Lord. You are our source. You are our, our organism, God. Everything stems from you, Lord. Everything. And we thank you right now for the gift. And Lord, we ask that you would bless us indeed right now. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we love you and we thank you so much, God, for first loving us. Keep us now. This day, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And we thank you once again for coming out and visiting with us. We trust that a word was said today that will help you along the way. That you will be better tomorrow than you was today. And always remember that I pray that the rest of this day will be a day that is spirit-filled for you in this, this coming week. Again, once again, that God will show you his favor like never before. Have mercy. And again, always remember that God loves you. God cares about you. And so do I. Be blessed.